Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I'm gonna be taking a look at this Reddit post, which is what is the future of Django? Are we becoming obsolete? It was posted a couple of days ago and it was pretty interesting. There's some, some good comments on this and it's worth bringing the conversation to YouTube just for everyone who's been thinking about this. And I've also personally been getting this question a couple of times now, just asking whether Django is becoming obsolete. So hopefully this video addresses that and yeah, so let's just take a look at the post. I'm gonna give my comments on, or my opinions on some of the comments as we go through it, and hopefully you get something insightful out of the conversation. So I'm gonna briefly go through this, and if you have read the post, which I'll include the link in the description for you to, to take a look at it, but I'm gonna briefly go through it, and so if you wanna skip through that, you can. So basically, the original post was uh, or this is this one has been edited now. So it just says here, uh, I've worked with multiple backend frameworks, including Django, .NET, Core, uh, Node.js, Express, etc. Django is by far my favorite backend framework. I'm not trying to attack the framework or the community of hardworking individuals. However, I do think the framework is starting to show its age and that as Python developers, we should think seriously about what we want future Django and Python web development more broadly to look like. Django was developed in 2003. Its extensive feature set and values included approach made it extremely powerful for rapid full stack web development, allowing it to become a favorite for millions of, of developers across the globe. I myself am one of those developers and I'm grateful for Django. Nevertheless, 2003 was a long time ago and say that the web has changed a lot since then would be an understatement. Front-end requirements and expectations have evolved to become incredibly complex, often requiring frameworks like React. It has also become standard practice to separate front-ends from back-ends to encourage a decoupling and maintenance. In this new environment, Django most often assumes the role of a back-end framework. It typically acts as an API endpoint in conjunction with DRA for Graphene for a separate front-end application typically built with JavaScript. Despite the substantial shift in how people typically use Django, the framework remains, or sorry, re retains all the assumptions and features it was built with in 2003. Templates are, in his opinion, the single biggest flaw because they are a core feature of Django, not just a side feature, but a core component of MB MVT, even though they serve no purpose in an API, which from my not infallible understanding is how people use Django. Beyond templates, some other potentially outdated features include session-based authentication, which should probably be replaced with a more secure job-based authentication. And just, yeah, just based on, on that statement, I know a couple of people will, um, no, will not be happy with that. Jot authentication is quite a sensitive one for some people. Uh, point being that Django is starting to show its age. Part of it that we're once core to the framework are now seldom used. If the divergence between standard web development practices and idiomatic Django continues to widen, it won't be long before the framework becomes obsolete. It's up to the Django and wider Python community to decide what to do about this. Everyone will have their own opinions, but my personal take is that we should push Django towards becoming better at what it's already best at and most favored for, which is being a powerful backend framework. This means, or well, this might mean removing older features that no longer serve a clear role in making it a stellar backend framework like templates. It might also mean better support for DRF and Graphene, possibly even making the native parts of the framework. GraphQL in particular needs more work because it allows for development of very powerful backend features and yet remains in an underdeveloped state with poor documentation in the Python world right now. That being said, I definitely acknowledge the templates are an integral part of so many projects already, so this will most likely not happen, and even if it did piss off a lot of people, this also seems to be strong disagreement against the notion that decoupled front or backends are the best idea. I've also, I've always been taught the value of this type of design, separation of concerns, clean code, rest of that jazz, so I'm just genuinely cons uh, surprised to hear this criticism. I think the ultimate best outcome I'd like to see would be a new Python web framework that takes the best parts of Django, DRF, and Graphene to provide a batteries included backend experience, sans some of the less well-aged features standard in Django. And uh, finally, I note on JavaScript, I'm not a huge fan of language and agree for most part on the position that it has evolved too quickly and chaotically to its own detriment. There's wisdom in not chasing the latest fads, but two decades is a long time, and some of the changes that have happened in web development practices are most definitely here to say. And then it has been edited, so I've been using Django for a year now. I've covered and had the opportunity to use all the major features, but there is, is far too much I don't know to claim any sort of expertise. Thus, it's been good to hear to critis uh, the criticism and counterpoints to reevaluate some of my assumptions. So, Maybe it will be updated again, I'm not sure. So it just depends on the time that you're reading this or watching this video. But yeah, so that's the well, that's the post. Um, again, 98 comments, so a lot of people were talking about this. And yeah, when someone, uh, again, he's not saying he attacks Django, Django but when someone takes a, a dig at it and uh, proposes some changes. There are a lot of people that can not necessarily be sensitive, but just be very um, unaccommodating to to the changes. Everyone has their own opinions, of course. So, yeah. But well, let's see. So, your complaint seemed to suggest that Django is not the right tool for the job you're trying to do. That's quite different from obsolescence. So that's I w I would agree with this because. Django is like everything else. It's a tool. Whether it's the right tool for your job is well, it, it's arguable. So it depends what you're trying to achieve. Uh, Django might not be the best solution for something that needs to be extremely scalable that might be better done by something like Go. Uh, whereas maybe if you just want to get something up and running really quickly and you just want to 
get the job done essentially then Django will probably be or would definitely be be a better choice than going with something like go where you got to just code everything up from the ground so it depends on what you're trying to achieve and every framework has its uh, pros and cons so maybe what he's what this person is suggesting of why Django should be improved is just not relevant because there are other tools that you could use instead of changing Django from what it already is. Um, so that obviously got the most support. So a lot of people agree with that. And so then just keep going. Most applications out there don't need SPA or microservices or Kubernetes or elastic scaling or everything that is in fashion. So this is uh, something I see also a lot in freelancing is that people just overcomplicate the job at hand, uh, especially just because it, of shiny object syndrome. There's a lot of technologies you can use. There's a lot of uh, d different things that are released all the time. And SPA, microservices, Kubernetes, all of these are relatively new. Um, so d the question is, do you really need to have an SPA, a single page application? Does the business requirement actually dictate that you need an SPA? Do you need microservices to achieve the business goal? These are the kind of questions you need to ask when you're looking at the technology. Does it serve a business goal or in some way help the business performance function? Uh, a lot of tech decisions will just not go through because it doesn't serve a business purpose. And most of the time, I would argue that you don't need Kubernetes, you don't need a single page application, you don't need microservices. Um, I think a lot of people would agree with that, especially in the solo project area. Maybe as the project gets bigger, then you can start asking these questions of scalability and should you start using a different technology here and there. Uh, but for the most part, for most people in smaller teams and in, in smaller projects, you're not going to need any of these fancy technologies. So tying that back to what this person, to, to this whole post, is he's saying that you don't need to change Django to accommodate all of these things that are in fashion just because it's in fashion. Django was built, yes, 20 years ago, but the way that it's been built, the idea behind it has stood the test of time. And 20 years later, still going strong uh, with a very lively, uh, happy community. I can't see that adding any sort of features to include um, either SPA or Django REST framework out of the box would would be a good idea. So it's just keep it, you, know, you, you don't have to adopt everything that's the latest fashion. Um, there's a reason that Django is is so successful and it's because it just hasn't gone with this, the shiny object syndrome. All right, it needs to become a real backend framework built from the ground up to facilitate a variety of backend architectures with the assumption that your front end will be written somewhere else. And so this person is saying, I mean, this is not hard to do with the REST framework. It requires no additional overhead to have the templating, templating features unused alongside an API consuming front end. So yeah, to install the Django REST framework is fairly simple. Um, and once you have it installed, the underlying parts of Django that you aren't using, like for example, templates are not gonna be in the way. Um, Django is built up as a set of different tools that you don't need to necessarily use at all in any Django project. So there's no need to remove certain features or even double down on certain features just because of the sake of trends and, and fads or even if no one is using that feature. It might be used in a couple projects. It might serve its use in, in some cases. Uh, but this point of the Django REST framework is, I think, quite true that most Django packages, even the larger ones like REST framework or even Django channels are not that difficult to install alongside a typical Django project and allow those technologies to kind of run the bulk of the project instead of using templates. You can then just use the API. So yeah, it doesn't come at, uh, at the cost of additional overhead. So it defeats the, the argument in that you should try and accommodate more of the, or try and push Django to, towards more of an API or backend framework, because there are so many packages that are so easy to install, you can just adopt your own Django project to use those packages instead of the built-in Django features. So for that's, I would say, one of the best reasons to pick up Django, because it's just so flexible. The With the way that apps work, you can very easily install something that takes over most of, or one part of the project, like authentication, 
or like database management or anything really that you can use these packages to handle entire aspects of Django that you never need to touch. So that's a really strong point as to why th things work in Django right now. Django is the fastest growing, most popular framework out there right now. Huge community. There's a future at least 10 years out. No Django dev is becoming obsolete for at least a decade. We are literally just entering the era of Python. So just on that note, that's quite true because we've seen Python, uh, just Python as the pro programming language, overtaking more and more languages on the Stack Overflow surveys in terms of how much it's being used. And yeah, I mean, right now, Python's the most used that it's ever been. Uh, if you're looking to take a Python project to the web, you're going to be looking at projects like Django and Flask and Fast API, etc. So in that sense, purely just in that sense, no way can Django be obsolete because we're just like this comment saying, we're just entering the era where Python is seemingly dominating the, the pr programming languages in terms of adoption. So absolutely no way can Django be obsolete because so many people are using Python and it goes kind of hand in hand that if you're using Python, then you'll most likely be considering using Django or other web frameworks. Django was built by people who had a business problem and solved it using Django. JavaScript frameworks, GraphQL, all these things were built by teams to solve their business problems. So yeah, that's it's very true. Uh, Facebook built GraphQL for scalability reasons, but everyone takes that as, oh, well then since Facebook's using it, we should all use it. And that's kind of flawed because your very simple landing page website or very simple business site does not need to use GraphQL. Uh, that's just a lot of unnecessary learning and time that you're going to spend investing in a technology that is absolutely not necessary to achieve the ultimate business goal of your website, business site, landing page, whatever it is. So things like GraphQL, I think are, uh, GraphQL is a, a good example because it was really just adopted into situations that were completely unnecessary. Uh, REST has provided more than enough capability to solve some problems. Of course, if you are having scalability issues and you're not getting the results out of a REST API that you think you could get with GraphQL, then yeah, do the business research and see whether it will be good for the long term. But again, in most small situations, you don't need to jump the gun and go with solutions that were created by other companies. Most of the time, a pure, simple HTML page, some CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript will get the job done. Django should really be called the framework for startups or the framework for MVPs or the framework for solo entrepreneurs or the framework for bootstrap SaaS. It's not shiny, but I'll be damned if I don't own several SaaS products that are all a success because of Django. Ease of development and admin panel for quick customer support. Apps are genius and I can literally just plug in pieces of my application that I don't want to deal with. It's highly opinionated, so I can hire almost any developer to get the job done and they'll produce similar solutions. It's not perfect, but it's basically perfect. Yeah, so on the point of the hiring developers, so th this is quite true because the way I like to think of when you explain Django to someone who has no idea what Django or framework is, is that it's like learning a tool or a set of tools and where everything is in that application. Like if you think of learning Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, when you're learning those, you learn about how to make headings, how to align things, how to highlight things, where all the buttons are, what this button does and importing that. So you just learn how the software works. Same thing, it's, it's kind of similar for Django because when you're learning Django, you learn about where all of the imports come from, how to do views like Django wants you to do views, how to do URLs, how to do models, and how to use everything that Django has provided so that you can basically just get it to work. So it's really just learning where everything is situated. And from that, for that reason, he's saying that you can hire pretty much any developer and you'll get similar solutions because you're using the same or same system or same set of principles in how to get the job done. So when someone uses Word or uses Excel, they, they're limited in that they have to use how that software is built. Same thing with Django, whereas when you're using something that's not a framework, you have complete freedom to, to implement that solution however you want. So for that reason, he's at least suggest, or this person is suggesting that Django is just way better to use because you have, a, because of the opinionated style of, of Django. So 
I kind of agree with that because uh, it makes it very easy to work with people who are familiar with Django because everyone knows where everything is. So for that reason, it's it's really good. Uh, and changing that aspect of of Django would definitely not be um, would not be beneficial just in making it less of a framework, making it more free reign. Uh, but on the other points of it, in that it's you know, the framework for startups or for MVPs, sure, that's also that's true. But you can also see examples of Django being used in much bigger projects like Sentry, like uh, Udemy, like Robinhood. I'm not exactly sure how much is being used there, but we do know, at least from some submissions online, that those companies do use Django, yet alone Instagram as another example. Uh, the extent to which they're using it, not exactly sure. But the fact that companies of that size would use Django is something to at least take into consideration. That it's not only for MVPs; it can be used in quite large projects. So, in that sense, it's absolutely not obsolete. If it's being used in massive companies and it's also being used in startup settings or at least in bootstrapping, uh, I absolutely can't see that Django is obsolete. So. There's a lot of opinions and you can keep going through this thread, but basically my ultimate opinion, from not only based on this, but just generally, I would say Django's in no way obsolete. Django developers or people using Django are not obsolete, not going to be obsolete in the next 10 years. I, I agree with one of, those, one of those comments. And yeah, I think that one of the takeaways that a lot of people have put in this thread is that you shouldn't mistake the latest trends and latest fads as a recommendation on what you should do there's a lot of technologies that have come and passed and they were trends and now they're gone and django has stayed true to what it's always been for its entire lifetime and i think that's one of the main reasons why it has such a strong community in that it's technically if you look at just all the way back to version 1.8 maybe 1.6 there have been some changes to the django project that have been massive changes like migrations and now the async functionality adding in possibly well 3.2 and beyond uh, th there have been quite a few massive changes but overall the underlying way that django works in that you have models and views and templates has remained the same and also just with the way that apps work you can really customize your django project to work however you'd like it to work if you want it to be in a microservice sort of style, you can do that. You can absolutely do that. If you want it to be just an API with a bunch of endpoints, you can absolutely do that as well. So it's very flexible. And I think for that reason, it's definitely one of the best choices at the moment for web development. And even though it still has such strong support for templates, I really think that that is, at least in my opinion, one of the one of the good things about it, because sometimes you just need a template. You don't need a lot to get something to work. And something like the Just Django Salaries is a pretty good example because here, this is just an HTML template with some context fetching some stuff from the database. And then there's two forms that you can submit. That's it. And I mean, the amount of code that was written is so little and the amount of time it took to get this up was maybe a couple hours. So again, this is maybe you could classify as bootstrapping, but really in terms of getting the job done, from a business point of view for making this up as quick as possible, making it reliable. I mean, I wouldn't pick anything other than Django to get this done and many other situations as well. So hopefully this kind of discussion and just break breakdown of some of the opinions on this post have been helpful. And yeah, if you're thinking that Django is obsolete, it's not, it's not going to be anytime soon. So for that reason, keep learning it keep using it in your projects, keep staying active in the community, and I will see you in another video.